everyone. Good morning and welcome back. Thank you for joining me as we continue to study this lesson entitled Real Unselfishness. For today, we will study topic number four. And as before, I invite you to take out your Bible and open it and follow along with me as we study the several passages that we're going to be reading. The topic for today is drastic measures. And our first question is, what do we need to realize and understand about the problem of Ananias and Sapphira? So let's go back to Acts chapter 5 and find out what happened. Acts chapter 5, verse 3 and 4. We remember yesterday that Ananias and Sapphira wanted to do what other people were doing and they had a land, so they sold it. But as they sold it, they decided among themselves that they were going to keep back half of the price and or a part of the price it doesn't say half but a part of the price and just give a part to the disciples now they went to peter and here it is it says but peter said verse three and four but peter said ananias why has satan filled thy heart to lie to the holy ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land while it remained, was it not thy own? And after it was sold, was it not in thy own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. So in, in their decision of only giving part to the disciples, they also conceived a lie together that they were, they were going to present that part that they were bringing to the disciple as a whole, as the whole price. And so in doing that, they lied, as it says here in the verses, they lied to the Holy Ghost because he had moved them to sell the property and give the, the, um, the price of the property. And they now lied that it was just part of it. And also they lied to God. In bringing and saying this is this is it this is the whole price of the property now let's look in 2nd Corinthians 2nd Corinthians chapter 9 and we're going to read verse 7 it says every man according to he as he has purposed in his heart so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity for God loves a cheerful giver so here again, we have another problem. Besides um, going back on a promise and lying, now they're also giving, um, they're not happy about their, what they're doing. So they're not being cheerful in giving. And God loves a cheerful giver. We are told in the note that nobody had forced them to do, to do this or um, to make this decision that they had made. They had made this this choice was on their own and when they attempted to deceive the disciples as we have said before they lied to the almighty god now who was leading them to do this it was satan satan led ananias and sapphire to lie to the holy ghost and here is a danger for us too it says those who are not wholly consecrated to god may be led to do the work of satan while yet they flatter themselves that they are in the service of christ is it a danger for us absolutely as long as we're not wholly consecrated to god any little part of ourselves that we hold back can be used by satan to do the same thing that ananias and sapphira did and we forget that god will one day demand of us what we have done with everything that he has provided for us most important what we have done with our life because he provided us with life in promising to give our hearts to him if we hold it back then we will be called um, to give account of that let's go to question b explain the drastic way the lord had to protect his early church from the ways of this hypocritical pair and why so let's go back to chapter 5 of Acts and see what happened next. If we look in verses 5 to 10, we have the rest of the story. 
So then Ananias, in hearing these words, fell down and gave up his ghost, and great fear came on all of them that heard these things. Now the young man took him and buried him. And while they were doing this, his wife came, and Peter asked her, in the space of three hours, now his wife comes, not knowing what had happened to him. And Peter then tells, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she says, yes, for so much. And so what happens? Then Peter said unto her, now, how is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Holy Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Then fell she, fell she down straight away at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young man came in and found her dead and carried her and buried her by her husband. So we see here that the punishment was immediate. Um, they lied. They, they agreed upon lying. And they both had the, the same punishment. Now, why was it necessary for God to act so quickly? We're told that in the church, um, the church would have been in danger because quickly there were being added new souls into the church. Um, people were becoming Christian in a fast, fast pace, right? And they needed to know that this was not a game that they were choosing to follow Jesus and it was something serious. And so God did not want to have people added to the church that were professing to serve him while still worshiping mammon or other gods, anything, right? So the judge, this judgment testified that men cannot deceive God, that he detects the hidden sins of the heart. And that he will not be mocked. It was designed as a warning to the church to lead them to avoid pretense and hypocrisy and to beware of robbing God. We are also told to read in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. What does it say there? It says, No man can serve two masters, for neither he will hate for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other ye cannot serve god and mammon so this was a, a lesson that needed to be taught at that moment because so many people were coming into the church that they needed to know that this was not a game that god reads the heart he knows the things that we think that we can hide from men and he needed them to know that and so it is a lesson for us today too if we make a promise that we are going to follow Jesus then we need to be serious about that promise and also realize that it requires sacrifice but we should never go back on our promise right and know that the Lord reads our heart I hope and pray that we will keep that in mind, that I will keep it in, in my heart as we continue to walk in our walk with God, never to go back on the promises that we made to follow Jesus. It's a serious, serious promise and to give our whole heart to Him. I will hopefully see you tomorrow so that we can continue to study topic number five of this lesson. It's been such a great lesson and I am so thankful to be spending time with you. See you then. Have a blessed day.